Namaste, and welcome to another episode, <laughs> another exciting episode of Uladu Narpadu. Well, it's exciting for me because I'm very excited about this teaching. Ramana's teaching really rescued me from relative knowledge, dualistic knowledge of yoga and meditation and introduced me to the non-dual knowledge of direct realization of Brahman, the self. And I'm very pleased with the result, I have to say. Look, you just look at this video, <laughs> any of my recent videos, and compare with my videos from a year or two ago, and you'll see the difference right away. So if you want to be like this, then you just practice this method. This is really just an extended commercial, you know, for the process of Atma Vichara, self-inquiry. Who am I? What am I? Whence am I? Where is this ego coming from? Where is this mind coming from? Where does it arise? Take a look into that within yourself. Nobody can do that work for you. We could talk and talk about all of this uh, different philosophy and stuff, but really the proof of the pudding is in the tasting. <laughs> so uh, let's take a look at today's verse, the third verse about relative and absolute knowledge. Know thus, that state which is completely devoid of knowledge and ignorance about objects is true knowledge. That which knows anything as other than itself is not true knowledge. Since self shines without another for it to know or to make it known, it is true knowledge. Though devoid of both knowledge and ignorance about objects, it is not a void. Oh no, that's for sure. <laughs> it's rather a plenum or fullness of objectless awareness, non-dual knowledge of itself. This is the non-dual state. This is absolute knowledge, the absolute truth, or whatever you want to call it. And this is also God realization, uh, Nibbana, or the kingdom of heaven, whatever name you want to give it, Vaikuntha, huh? many religions, many names. But it's the same state, it's the ultimate state attainable by a human being. So what is so special about this state? Why do we call it non-dual and absolute and all these other fancy names? Well, first of all, it's completely devoid of knowledge and ignorance about objects. Knowledge and ignorance depend on each other. They're complementaries. Huh? It's like before, I didn't know about Ramana's teaching. I was ignorant. Now I know about Ramana's teaching. <laughs> so the knowledge that I have now in my mind about Ramana's teaching is based on the fact that I had ignorance before. And likewise, the ignorance that I had before was based on the lack of the knowledge that I have now. Huh? But that knowledge is relative because it is of the mind. And the mind can only know objects which are out there, which are separate, which are different from the self. That's duality. And as Ribu Gita says, as soon as you have even a little of the mind, then it takes over everything. <laughs> Why? Because mind is duality. As soon as you have a little duality, well, you have duality, right? <laughs> and duality is the cause of suffering. This separation from our real self. 
this creation of an artificial me, the ego, and of course the mind, which likes to keep us busy 24 hours a day, chasing after its never-ending stream of thoughts. Instead, Ramana teaches to do this practice called Atma Vichara, who am I? Not just asking the words, who am I, but looking into it as an experience. What is the experience of I? Where does it arise? It's a particular sensation. Where do you feel it? Where does it come from? What is its source? And of course, the source is the self, the real I. That's the absolute layer of knowledge, the substrate beneath all others. But when we attain that, then we no longer perceive objects. We no longer perceive anything as different from the self. Rather, we see that there's this ocean of consciousness, and I am that consciousness, and everything I perceive is simply a form and a name overlaid on that consciousness, huh? like a mirror that reflects all kinds of forms and colors put before it but it doesn't have any particular form or color itself. So knowing that to be I, I am that, so hung, I am that Brahman, I am that pure consciousness, and that consciousness is everything. That consciousness is not limited to this body so many things begin to open up, so many perceptions, so many doors that were closed to us before suddenly become available. And one senses the purity, uh, the naturalness, and the rightness of this state. This is realization. This is enlightenment. This is self-knowledge. So there's another verse in the Upadesha Undiyar, which we covered in the previous series, verse 27. The knowledge which is devoid of both knowledge and ignorance about objects alone is real knowledge. This is the truth, because in the state of self-experience, there is nothing to know other than oneself. This is the truth. Huh? All we know, all we can know, is our own consciousness. If something is not present in our consciousness, we don't know it. We can't know it. But as soon as it shows up, then we know. Uh, there it is. Uh, this is the thing about realization that tends to throw people off, that the common misunderstanding of reality is that there's a world out there full of all these different objects and those exist more or less permanently, huh? which of course all this so far is not true at all, but anyway, it exists permanently or they exist, these different objects, different, different objects and <laughs> when we go to sleep at night the whole thing persists and it's the same world that we perceive the next morning when we get up. Ha ha ha. Well, good luck with that. Because, as we know, in reality, everything changes all the time. You can't put your foot in the same river twice. Huh? Now, Osho says... <laughs> You can't even put your foot in the same river once. But the river that you put your toe into, by the time you put your heel into it, has changed. So, <laughs> everything is changing constantly. And we know from physics, atoms are in constant vibration. They're always moving, changing quantum states, reflecting and transmitting different kinds of energies. So, nothing stays the same 
even for a very short time. Who are we kidding, folks? Huh? There is no world out there. There is only consciousness. And everything that we perceive, everything that we experience is through consciousness. As far as we know, it doesn't have any separate existence and it can't be proved that it does. That requires a long, very philosophical explanation, which we will get to, I promise, when we go through the book Maha Yoga, which is a future series. I'm waiting until Ronnie gets here so we can go through it together like a discussion. And that's going to be a lot of fun. But uh, in the meantime, take it as an assurance from Ramana himself, who is the most highly self-realized person in thousands of years uh, of history. Because he attained realization spontaneously at the age of 16 without any sadhana, without any study. Nobody can match that. This is called Nitya Siddha, always enlightened. He was never not enlightened. As soon as his body grew to the point where he could withstand the energy, enlightenment happened to him. So there's no other person within recent memory or recent history to uh, manifest enlightenment like that. So he is saying, <laughs> there is no world out there, folks. There is only what we see in our consciousness. So if we're seeing only consciousness, consciousness is not different from the self. That means the world is the self. The self is the world. That is non-duality. It's not monism. Monism means everything is one and it's all the same. But obviously it's not the same. Huh? There's day and night. There's morning and evening. There's hot weather, cold weather. Huh? Everything changes. Well, that's okay because it's still all coming to us through consciousness and consciousness is one. The only consciousness there is, is my consciousness, I consciousness, the self. So simple. <laughs> it's too simple. People with complex minds and thoughts and agendas can't grasp it. What to do? <laughs> well, you have to do the sadhana. You have to do the process. Process of atma vichara. All the very complex philosophical explanations of the Vedanta and the Dharma and the Vedas and so forth, Upanishads and whatever, are from intellect. And intellect is part of ego. Huh? It may be a very refined, very uh, high expression of it, but it's basically the same thing. There is me and then there's everything else and it's all different. <laughs> dualism. And because of dualism, we have to split the world into self and non-self. And that hurts. That creates suffering. Because then we have all these things that are not myself. And I have to adjust and adapt to them. And that's painful. But if the world is non-dual, that means everything is within the self. So it's me. I don't have to adjust or adapt to it because it's me. It's myself, eh? <laughs> you know, I don't care anymore about trying to seem intellectual or trying to be, you know, impressive or trying to make uh, complicated arguments and stuff. What I care about is expressed here in the verse in the word Arivitarku. Arivitarku has basically four meanings. To make something known is the root meaning. So you can make something known to another. You can make something known to yourself. You can make oneself known to another. Or you can make oneself known to oneself. That's what we're looking for, the fourth definition. 
Arivitarku. Uh, making oneself known to oneself. Om Tat Sat. Om Harihi Om.